Welcome back. Part 2 of the Dome of the Rock. Let's dive into Section 2, the Dome of the Rock Celestial Shemitah Pattern, and see why it's a 1,335-year pattern in the first place. So first, to discuss the Dome of the Rock, let's dive into some history about it, and then we can discuss the pattern aspects that are tied to it. So first, beginning with our history slide about the Dome of the Rock. Now, it began construction in 688 AD and finished about 691, 692, depending on who you source. Now, this is the first major sanctuary built by Islam. And according to Arab tradition, this is where Muhammad ascended into heaven for a night journey. This is also the third holiest site in Islam. Now, two takeaways about the history of the Dome of the Rock is its construction start date of 688 AD. And then secondly, the ascension aspect, which we'll cover in the third section of this video. Nonetheless, it's 688 AD that will be significant for us and our Shemitah celestial sign pattern. And one way that we know that, aside from this particular example we're about to look at, if you recall on 9-11 of 2001, the Pentagon was hit, which marked the 60th anniversary of 9-11-1941 when the Pentagon began construction as well. And so moreover, my conjecture is that there's a significance to the start of construction on a building. And so using that as our premise, let's move forward and see how 688 AD connects in two unique ways to the end times. So switching to this slide. And using 688 AD as our starting point, we will see that there is a pattern connected to the Shemitah cycle as well as a pattern connected to celestial signs. Not to mention it ties directly back into our celestial countdown of Christ's thousand year reign. So let us begin with the Shemitah side of this pattern. Now I was going to do an extended in-depth detailed look at the Shemitah year, the Hebrew calendar, and which Hebrew calendar I believe is correct. However, that definitely is gonna be tailored for a different video I would just contend by stating this, that no matter which calendar you choose to use, all of them are pointing to the significant moment that we are in right now. Although I would like to state two things about it real quick. And so pulling up this slide, we are told in Exodus chapter 12 that God commanded Israel to begin the Hebrew year starting on Nisan 1, which would in turn set up the redemptive plan for Israel, which is a key part not to overlook, but nonetheless rolled out through the seven feasts of Israel. Now, what's really interesting, saints, is that Exodus 12 appears to be when God institutes this plan officially, because according to the writer of Psalm 81, Asaph, we actually learn that the beginning of months and festival days was prophesied to Joseph. So that's at least 200 years plus before we even get to Moses. So it was announced to Joseph and then officially instituted once Israel had rescued out of the hands of Egypt. However, and pay attention to the language here in verse four of Psalm 81, for it is a statute for Israel. Remember the whole purpose of Daniel's 70th week, the seven year tribulation is all about Israel. Israel, and God's redemptive plan for them. Isaiah 44, 6 is a great example of this. This is what the Lord says. He who is the king of Israel and his redeemer, the Lord of armies. I am the first and I am the last. And there is no God besides me. That's Jesus Christ. And emphasizing his deity back in the Old Testament. But nonetheless, coming back to Psalm 81, let's also pay attention to the months begin with lunar patterns, not a set day like on a Wednesday, nor on a spring or fall equinox. The Hebrew calendar is a lunar calendar. Now, why am I saying all that? Well, check this out. On this slide, since Tishri 1 is not the start of the Hebrew year, that means it falls back six months to Nisan 1. And so, the year of 2022, in this particular example here, 
isn't affected by the six months difference of where you start the Hebrew year. So moreover, the Gregorian year doesn't change. Here, let me paint this in a different light in order to better articulate what I'm trying to say here. And so switching to this slide, this particular slide outlines the seven counting method that would be familiar from a Hebrew perspective, where we have a week of days, so seven days a week. We have a week of weeks. We also have a week of years, which is our Shemitah cycle. Now, when you string along seven of these weeks of years, this is how we derive a Jubilee year from the biblical text in Leviticus chapter 23 and 25. Now, there is a debate among scholars about regarding the counting of this 50th year that's mentioned in Leviticus. And so pulling up this side, the question becomes, is the 50th year a separate year unto its own or is it the first year of the next Shemitah cycle? I personally lean that it's the first year of the next Shemitah cycle. And I take this position because an interesting caveat about the Hebrew year, taking that position, that you can tell when a Shemitah cycle has ended because that Hebrew year is evenly divisible by seven. And likewise, you would know when a Jubilee year is because that year is also evenly divisible by 49. However, if you add an additional year for the 50th year, then as you do this over time, let's say two Jubilee cycles, your Hebrew years are no longer divisible by seven, nor are they divisible by 49. So I say all that to say this, pulling up this slide, because the Hebrew year of 1924 was 5733, and the Hebrew year for 1973 was 5684, these two Hebrew years are evenly divisible by 49. And a very interesting mathematical pattern emerges called the halfway jubilee pattern if you understand it from the perspective of 49 years and not an exclusive 50th year. Because look what happens when we divide 49 by 2. Because look what happens when we divide 49 years by 2. It equals 24.5 years. Now, 24.5 is interesting because that is an 11 connection seen with a decimal, which means there's something here. There's something that God wants us to see, which is this. If we add 24.5 to 1924, and from the other side, if we subtract 24.5 from 1973, it gives us the exact middle of 1948.5. That is profound. And so we know 1948 is pivotal. It's a pivotal year. And I've been building up towards this particular year for a reason. So I appreciate your patience because check this out. Here is how the Shemitah cycle now ties in to the Dome of the Rock. You see, if we take 1948 and subtract 688 from it, we get 1260 years. That's pretty interesting. We'll come back to that here in a second. Because now if we look at the year of 688, it occurred on the first part of the halfway point of a Shemitah cycle. And why is that interesting? Because 1948 is the exact same start year of a halfway point in between a Shemitah cycle. Which is why when you take the difference of 1260 years and divide it by 7, it equals 180, which means there have been 180 Shemitah cycles in between the start of the construction of the Dome of the Rock and the regathering of Israel. Isn't that interesting? And although these are halfway points of a Shemitah cycle, it means that we have an offset Shemitah pattern that's related here, which remember, shouldn't be a surprise as we saw there was a connection with the half wave Jubilee pattern connecting us to 1948. In fact, to that point, here is where celestial signs start coming into play. You see, 10 years previous to 514 of 1948, there was a total lunar eclipse on 514 of 1938. So there is a 10 year gap, that number is significant here in a moment. But also, with respects to the Israeli Tetrad, 
we know that the four moon pattern is also connected to the significance of Israel being regathered in 1948. And the sorrow cycle numbers associated with that pattern, a subscriber pointed this out. Thank you for sharing this detail. But when you add those sorrows numbers of 121, 126, 131, and 136, when you add those up, guess what that equals to? 514. Now, it could just be quote-unquote coincidental, but it is interesting that it matches the exact day, marking the most significant moment in recent Israeli history. And then finally, before we move to the celestial pattern that ties this Dome of the Rock connection, since we have a 10-year difference from our total solar eclipse, marking 514 of 1938, and we know that a sorrows period is 18 years, and we know that a Shemitah cycle is 7 years, multiplying our 10-year difference from the eclipses times the sorrow's duration of 18 years times 7 years for the Shemitah cycle. That equals 1260, which means, saints, that the Shemitah cycle and lunar patterns conjoin between these two historical events. And so, moreover, we know that the 180 Shemitah cycles is our Shemitah connection from the Dome of the Rock to the regathering of Israel. That, saints, is supernatural by design. And so now let's traverse our other leg of the Dome of the Rock through celestial patterns. And so to set this up, we already know that the Israeli Tetrad is connected to this pattern. And throughout other videos from this celestial countdown series, we have outlined how this 18-year lunar eclipse pattern has connected us all the way back to World War I, the 1913 and 1914 set. In fact, if you recall in that German Connection video, we also saw that this moon pattern goes as far back as 1842. Not to mention the origin of the Israeli Tetrad and when all these moons first started. We saw the second moon of the series, when it began in 1228, was also connected to some end-time prophecy. King Frederick II, also within that German Connection video. But still, the very first moon of this pattern only began in 1047 AD. I say only began, that's <laughs> over a thousand years ago, but still, 1047 isn't quite 688 AD. Which is why we now have to talk about a connecting four moon eclipse pattern that we will dub the Dome of the Rock Tetrad. Because, saints, this is extremely fascinating. And so, let me pull up this slide. The transition. In order to see the profoundness of this celestial connection point. Now, these screenshots are a little blurry when zooming in on them. But, I'm going to use this overall as a roadmap so you can see high level. And I'll just pull in the screenshots one at a time. So you can see the dates of these celestial patterns. Oh, and one more thing. These screenshots come from that Excel file that I've dropped in the G Drive. And I've also added a Microsoft Word document with the links to NASA's website where you can pull these into an Excel file for yourself just to compare. But beginning with our transition slide, the 1948 and the 1260 year connection and 2023 and 1335 years. Those screenshots are of the Israeli Tetrad. We've seen those a lot, so I'm not going to zoom in on those. What we want to focus on is the connecting celestial point between our Israeli Tetrad and the Dome of the Rock Tetrad. And to do that, we need to look at the year of 1047, as that is when the Israeli Tetrad started, the first moon of that pattern. The transition year from the Dome of the Rock Tetrad. But it might make more sense to actually begin with the Dome of the Rock and the four moons that occurred those years. So let's begin there. Pulling up that screenshot, in the years 687 and 688, the Saros numbers that are associated with those four moons is 83, 88, 93, and 98. And again, 688 is when the Dome of the Rock construction began. That's key. And as you can see on this slide, 
these four moons will occur every 18 years. Which, at this point, assume these four moons are completely independent and not related or connected to our Israeli tetrad. These are just the four moons that occur at the time the Dome of the Rock first began construction. And so, coming back to our transition slide, these four moons are just reoccurring over and over and over again until we get to 1047. So let's pull up that screenshot. Because it turns out, saints, that our Dome of the Rock Tetrad occurs the exact same year as the start of our Israeli Tetrad. Saints, that's profound. That's incredible. To put it in another way, the Israeli Tetrad four moon pattern begins to switch out into our Israeli Tetrad pattern. It's the exact same moons. Essentially, it's the exact same four lunar eclipses. For example, by the time we get to the year 1354, the first half of the pattern is the first two moons of the Israeli Tetrad. And the last two moons is the Dome of the Rock. They're literally connected. So where our Dome of the Rock trails off, our Israeli Tetrad picks it back up. That, saints, is profound. It's supernatural by design. That demonstrates God's sovereignty on a profound level. I can't overstate that. I hope you guys are really seeing the significance of this connection between these two Tetrad patterns. And so coming back to our transition slide, the high-level view of this. Saints, from 688 A.D., to 2023, this is our 1335 year connection. Now, just one more element to help solidify this 2023 connection. Let me turn to this side the Israeli Tetrad BMA pattern, or before, middle, and after. Because there is another pattern emerging here, and why 2023 is significant and not 2022 as our reference point for the Dome of the Rock. You see, the Israeli Tetrad that occurred in 1949 and 50 occurred one year after our 514 date. And yet, the next time it comes around, the Israeli Tetrad pattern in 1967 and 1968, the Six-Day War when Israel recaptured Jerusalem, that significant date landed in the middle of that eclipse pattern. And therefore, it would follow that when our Israeli Tetrad pattern occurred in 21 and 22, the third temple connection ties us one year after the Israeli Tetrad pattern in 2023. And so the significant events for Israel happened before the Tetrad, in the middle of the Tetrad, and now one year after the Tetrad, marking 2023. And on a side note, there is a unique connection with Passover and 413 in all three examples. And also notice that the two most significant events in recent Israeli history didn't land on feast days. Remembering that the feast days have very unique prophetic significance to Jesus' redemptive plan for Israel, not the church. It's one reason why I argue the rapture won't happen on a feast day. But we'll tailor that for a different video. And so, coming back to our Dome of the Rock pattern, as we have demonstrated, there is a unique connection from the Dome of the Rock and the Shemitah pattern connected with 180 Shemitah cycles, exactly to 1948. And from the celestial pattern side, we have the Israeli Tetrad being exactly connected to the Dome of the Rock Tetrad and to 1948. In addition, that pattern aspect also ties to Jewish feast days. Now, why is this significant and profound? Well, we highlighted this towards the beginning of the video when we discussed Colossians chapter 2, where we have feast days mentioned, which is a full moon pattern. But we also have new moons mentioned and Sabbath days, which are inherently tied to Shemitah cycles. Isn't that fascinating that all of these parameters and patterns intersect in 1948 and more profoundly points to Christ. Now, to close out section two of this video, turning to this side 
And why 1335 is very significant is that we have both the Shemitah cycle and the combination of the Dome of the Rock Tetrad and the Israeli Tetrad that from 688 AD, adding 1335 years, puts us in the year of 2023. And why is that significant outside of this mathematical and scientific celestial connection? Well, check this out. We are told in Daniel chapter 12, verse 12, that blessed is the one who is patient and attains to the 1335 days. And because this entire chapter is tied to the significance of Israel in the end times, that 1335 is pointing to 2023 and that 2023 is the year of the rapture. And that the mathematics and science it's just another layer to confirm that. Also, check out Brother Carlo's channel, The Bible Architecture, because he is being led by the Holy Spirit to the exact same conclusion, that 2023 is a very pivotal year, and through the connection of the Dome of the Rock. In fact, I'll leave a link to that specific video in the description. I know Brother Aaron from God a Minute is also coming to the same conclusion which his link is also in the description as well. Now let's quickly discuss the significance and the role of Islam in the end times.